Hi everyone, in this video I am going to show you how you are going to write your cover letter to the Home Office. So this works for any application. So you may be applying for limited leave to remain, for uh, visit visa, for all kinds of immigration application. Okay, so this is the usual custom that um, that's expected. Okay, obviously you can write however you want to write, but from the UK custom, uh, this is I'm showing you how they write their letter. Okay, so first of all, we are going to put our name here. So your name. So we'll say I'm just going to come up with a making up name. Okay, so. Okay, so write your full name and then you write your address. So let's say you live in 12 Road Street, okay, London. So that's the town and then postcode SW123FF UK. If you're in the UK, then you don't, need to, you don't need to put the UK. But if you're from another country, then you need to write your country as well. And then you need to insert the date that you're writing it. At the date of writing, it is April 2021. So this is on the top right hand side. You write your, your full name and address and the date. And then you're going to go back to the left side and then you put dear sir, madam. Okay. You can also, okay, you can also write, it's entirely up to you, but I normally don't, don't do it because you're just going to upload your document. So before, okay, obviously when before all this digitization, you, you put the addressee, so it would be to whom it may concern. Okay, so you can say to whom it may, to whom it may concern. Uh, you could say UK visas, and immigration you can also say that but I would cut that I wouldn't put that there so go back to to this format and then you can just insert here okay so I would not put the full address of the UK visas and immigration because you're just going to be uploading this letter anyway so you'd write that there to whom it may concern uh, UK visas and immigration uh, Usually, I don't even put that. I would just say to whom it may concern, and then, dear sir, madam, and and then you put the subject of your of your letter, which is the formal the format, and I'm using the Home Office format, which is your name. Firstly, you write your name, okay, your full name. That's in your passport, and then your date of birth. So. And then your nationality. So in this case, let's say Nigeria. Okay. So, and then I would highlight that. So if you're writing and you're the applicant, you need to write your name here. But if you're writing on behalf of the applicant, then it is the applicant's name that needs to be mentioned here. Okay. It's the applicant, we, blah, 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 full name, date of birth, and then nationality. So then you start with why are you writing? Okay. So you have to write, you have to have an introduction. You can't easily say, you know, just straight to the point. So there has to be a structure to your letter. So I would normally say, I am writing in support of my application for, I don't know what you're applying for. So you could be visit visa. Okay, you could be applying for renewal of my partner's visa, let's say, okay, partner's visa. If you're writing as a parent, I support for my, you say my, okay, you'd say my support for my visit visa um, application. Okay, so this here would be the reason. So this will be, sorry type of application and my example could be visit visa renewal of your partner's visa 
it could be um, limited leave to remain, to remain, limited leave, leave to remain. It could be naturalization. Okay, so all kinds, any kind of application, and, and you have to insert that because I can't guess what you're going to, what you're trying to apply. So type of application, um, and then application, and then you'd say I confirm. So just confirming, I confirm that I have completed an online application form together with the following supporting documents okay I know that you already have checklists okay but and I know you have uploaded your documents or you're going to scan them so what this letter what this letter is about and why you're confirming reconfirming your documents is to just have a double record of what you've actually provided so you have to write, you know, passport, two biometric card, and three. If you're providing bank statements, then you need to write the name of the bank. Okay. So let's say, let's say Barclays Bank, Barclays Bank from, and then you insert the period, let's say from January 20, uh, 2020, let's say 2020 to April 2021 okay and then you have you know you write the pay slips because this is quite common with this type of application you usually provide your if you're applying for limited leave to remain uh, pay slips and bank statements so again you write the period so pay slips for uh, the period from uh, let's say I don't know June 2020 to April 20, 2021. Now here there is no right or wrong answer. Okay, so this is basically you're narrating, you're listing all the documents that you're providing with your application. Okay, so I'm gonna highlight that so that um, so you know that that's just an example. And then you'd say um, my then you introduce that my current visa expires on and then date of the expiry date um, I am now applying to renew it okay so if it is the case that you're renewing it then you know you say it my current visa expires obviously this doesn't apply if you're applying for a visit visa then in your in, in which case you'd say I'm applying for a visit visa because okay so I am applying for a visit Visa because and then you state the reason. Okay, so again, there's no right or wrong answer how you are going to what you're going to say in the next paragraph. But usually, I would say my current visa expires. I'm not applying to renew it. And if you are, let's say, there are some things that you want to address on the application. Let's say um, you have some criminal. Uh, you have some find from you know from previous years. Then you need to disclose it or so write about any issues you want to expand uh, on expand and inform the home office um, write about the documents that you are unable to provide for example uh, they've asked you for let's say council tax or tenancy agreement, then you can say, I can't provide it because um, I am renting a room or I can't provide it because the council tax is included in the rent um, along those lines, okay? So don't waffle, okay? Don't write your whole story, your, your life story, but summarize it in such a way that you, you need to decide whether the information you're providing with the Home Office will assist your application or whether it's already obvious from your previous immigration history or from your documents that you're submitting, okay? If it's not obvious, then you need to then, this is the reason why you, you're writing the cover letter, to make sure that you have record, that you have highlighted it to the Home Office, you have disclosed what you needed to disclose that you couldn't disclose in on the form because the, the the form only asks yes or no question, for example, and you needed to expand on 
on a certain answer that you've included on the form and also things that things that you want to inform the home office that that should be included okay what else do you need to to put here my tip is do not include terminologies that you are not sure what they mean okay so you can't say can i apply for settlement visa i'm applying for settlement visa which if it's not the case that you're applying for settlement visa, okay, it has to be very clear. You have to be clear on what you're applying, whether renewing your limited leave to remain, whether you're, if you are an overstayer and you want to write a letter to the home office explaining why you overstayed and why you're applying now, then that needs to be, you know, set out. If you are unsure about what terminologies to, to use, then don't use it if you're not sure. Okay, so you can't be saying settlement because at the moment settlement, either you're applying for indefinite leave to remain, that is the settlement terminology, or you're applying under the European EU settlement scheme. Okay, so pre-settled status, settled status, this kind of terminology. So don't, don't confuse it. Your letter has to be very straight to the point and should highlight the the issues that you wanted the home office to um, to take note okay so going back to the letter i would say okay so let's say let's okay let's get rid of that for now because we we're assuming uh, i'm assuming that we are writing a letter um renewing our visa okay so my current visa expires on and then you insert the date so let's say i don't know first of may 2021 I am now applying to renew it and I would say if you want to be placed on the five-year route then you need to also highlight it you'd say please please take note that I comply with all the requirements to be placed on the five-year route and then you state what these are, what these requirements are, and usually the requirements you'd, you'd state that I have passed an English test. And then you'd say C certificate. And earn, and I earn. So if you earn 18,600, then you state I earn 18,600. Or you say above, if it's above, 18,600 per annum before tax. Or if you are taking into account your partner's earnings, then you say, and my partner and I both earn above the 18,000, above the 18,600 per annum before tax income requirement. Sorry, tax which meets the income requirement. Okay, and then if you are applying for a partner's visa, to uh, renewing your partner's visa, then you'd say, my partner, you just confirm that you're a partner and my partner and I intend to live permanently together because this is one of the requirements as well. Intention, tend to live permanently together in the UK. If there isn't anything else that you want to say, so you might think, oh, okay, well, I haven't really got anything to say to the home office. That's fine. Okay, so you have a choice whether you want to write a cover letter or or don't. But I would always encourage you to write a cover letter and um, set out what documents you're providing so that there's no um, there's no argument. But if you don't feel like you have to write a letter, then absolutely it's not necessary. It's not a mandatory requirement to write a letter but if you do explaining things to the home office then write a cover letter and you end with I look forward to hearing from you that the that my application has been successful has been successful and my biometric residence card has been issued yours faithfully Okay, so you use yours faithfully and then your name and then you name and then above your name you, you insert your signature. Okay, 
So that's how you'd write a letter. Now, you probably wonder, well, what about the law? Can I cite the law? Well, if you don't know the law, it's better not to make a fool of yourself by inserting something that you're not sure of. I remember a while ago, somebody applied for a child's visa. So she is married to a British citizen and she came to the UK on a spouse visa, but she left her son in her home country. And then when she applied, she did it all by herself. She applied for a child uh, settlement visa for the child to join her in the UK. And she was refused. So the application was refused because she didn't know the requirements of the sole parental responsibility. But when she tried to appeal, she wrote to the home office telling them about, you know, she has a right to have her child under the UN, you know, children's rights. You know, she's included UN and if you're not a UK lawyer or if you're a lawyer from other jurisdiction and you clearly do not know the legal system and the law regarding a specific court case, then it's best to highlight, cite or mention any laws that you're not sure that is that's still applicable because it's quite embarrassing. I was reading her letter to the Home Office. I was a bit embarrassed because she was citing everything that's completely wrong that she sort of researched on the Internet and cut and pasted it on her letter and oh, everything. There, there, there was not even one single law that she cited that was um, that was applicable to her case. So it's the same thing for your immigration application. If you don't know, like for example, even cases, if you don't know cases and you don't know how it's applied, it's best to just leave everything out. And even as a lawyer, I used to be embarrassed of cut and pasting you know, some immigration advisors would include, you know, cases from here and there and, you know, just to fill the paper, just to fill the pages of the paper. But I found that with the Home Office, you know, imagine if you are actually, imagine yourself as a caseworker of the Home Office and you received an application, a letter with all these cases after cases after cases that's supposed to apply to your, to your application which completely, you know, which which doesn't. And when you're applying, it's not about whether the Home Office should read these cases and whether they should, you know, because you've filled all the four pages of paper on cases and laws, that they should, you know, they should grant you the application. It's not the case at all. And I found that if I received that, I would be absolutely irritated. And it's kind of an insult to, you know, to somebody's intelligence. <laughs> so that's why when I write a letter to the Home Office, I always just stick to why am I writing this letter? And the answer to that is to verify the documents that you have completed, a bit of your immigration history, so they have a bit of knowledge. Don't expect them to read everything that you've submitted, okay? Please do not expect them because they have so many cases that they look at. And it's a matter of tick boxes. And if you don't highlight that in your letter, because they have, they have to read your letter. But if you're not, if you're going to send them like five pages of your letter, then obviously, uh, you know, who wants to read five pages of letter of gibberish? So you need to be very, very straight to the point, um, explaining why are you writing? So in this case, um, we're writing because we want, um, you know, we want a support letter giving them information about what we've provided. I know they already have that on the checklist and so on. And then give them an insight of when your visa expires and give them an insight that you still comply with a five-year route. Okay, so in this case, we are applying for renewal of a limited leave to remain under five-year route. And you have to highlight it. If you are applying to renew your limited leave to remain under the 10-year route, but then you now comply with all the requirements, then that is, that's the reason why you're writing the letter. You can say, please take note that I now comply with all the requirements to be placed under the five-year route. So you write a letter in such a way that you're pointing it out to the Home Office, please grant to me the five-year, place me on the five-year route because I now comply all the requirements. And also just confirming that you comply with all the requirements, you meet all the requirements, you've got English test, accommodation, and you know, you're earning 18,600 and so on. So that's the reason why you're writing the, the letter, not to, you know, confuse the person reading and deciding on your case. Okay, so that's all I wanted to share in this video. And I hope this has been useful. If you do want a copy of a template that I've already done, 
for limited leave to remain, so this is renewing your visa in the UK, that already has the law applicable to your case. So applying for, you know, partner's visa, renewing partner's visa, um, spouse visa, fiancé visa, and, you know, child's visa, for example, then, you know, let me know and I will send you a, you know, I will send you a link to download the template of the, the letter. Okay, thanks for watching and please consider subscribing to my channel so I can, I can create more videos like this one. Very, very practical application that you can use for your immigration applications. Thank you. Bye.